Hello there, this is Glenn Berry from Dr. DMV LLC, and I'm back with another video. In this video, we're going to cover Query 8, Last Backup by Database, Query 9, SQL Server Agent Jobs, and Query 10, which is SQL Server Agent Alerts. This series of videos is going through the complete set of my SQL Server 2019 Diagnostic Information Queries. These queries are available for free at glensqlperformance.com resources. Let's start with Query 8. This query reads from the Sys Databases System View along with the backup set and backup media family tables in the MSDB System Database. At a high level, this query simply tells you the last time that each of your databases was backed up. This is very important information. So now let's go ahead and run this query and see what it tells us in more detail. So when we run that, as you can see, it returns information for each user and system database on the instance except for tempdb. To start with, it shows the name of the database, the recovery model for the database, and the log reuse weight description. The log reuse weight description tells you what, if anything, is preventing the transaction log from being cleared. That's a very important property to monitor on a production database server. Then for each database, we see the time that the last full database backup completed and the location of the backup file. Knowing the location of the database backup file is very important in real life. Having this information here also helps you detect if something external to SQL Server, such as Veeam or Backup Exec, is running database backups that can cause problems for you. If that's happening, the location column will have something that looks quite different than this. It typically looks more like a GUID rather than a normal file path. Scrolling to the right, we see the completion times and locations for the last differential backup and also the last transaction log backup. Of course, if a database is in simple recovery model, there won't be any transaction log backups. At any rate, knowing what's happening with your database backups is extremely important. There's an old saying, if you don't have a backup, you don't have a database. Next, let's take a look at query number nine, SQL Server Agent Jobs. This query gives you useful information about all your SQL Server Agent Jobs. This query pulls information from the Sys Jobs, Sys Categories, Sys Job Schedules, and Sys Schedules tables in the MSDB System Database. Also, if you look at this query, I've got a link to the Ola Hallengren Maintenance Solution right down here. And I also have another link to a blog post that I wrote that has a script that lets you add default schedules to the standard Ola Hallengren Maintenance Solution jobs. So that saves you a lot of manual work if you use that script. And you can easily modify the schedule that it uses. Let's run this query and see what it returns in more detail. So when we run this, it comes back and you can see that it shows the job name for each one of your agent jobs along with the job description and the job owner, which you don't want the job owner to be somebody's individual login. And there's some arguments about what it should be, but I like to use SA as a default. And then it shows you when the job was created and whether or not the job is enabled and whether or not there's an operator associated with it that's enabled and what category the job is in and if the schedule for the job is enabled because if you don't have a schedule and it's not enabled then the job's never going to run then the final columns are the next run date and the next run time for that job so this is a pretty useful query to have in real life if you are working on a production database server the next query in the set is query number 10 sql server agent alerts and these are different from SQL Server agent jobs. And I find a lot of newer DBAs or even some experienced DBAs have never really even heard of SQL Server agent alerts. They are very useful because you can set up alerts for certain kinds of hardware and software errors. And then if this thing happens that you set up an alert for, you can have it send an email to a distribution list that's tied to a SQL operator, for example. So let's go ahead and run this query but before I do that, actually, I have a script right here that you can run this script, and as long as you have a SQL operator set up, then it will create a bunch of common alerts that you might want to have on your instance. And so that's the link right there. So let's go ahead and run this query and see what it shows us. This comes back and it shows you the name of the alert, and it automatically picks up the name of your instance. And then it creates 13 different alerts, that script that I was telling you about earlier and if you scroll over to the right here 
it shows us that the alert is enabled and it has a notification set up that's tied to that SQL operator. And it's set up to have a 900 second delay between responses, so every 15 minutes. So that way it's not, not gonna send out uh, a storm of email if it ever happens. And then the last columns here show us how many times that alert is fired, which is zero. And then the last date and time that that alert was fired. Again, these are bad things that might happen to your server that would normally just go on the SQL Server error log and you might not notice them. But now when you have the alerts set up and if you have email turned on for the database server, then you'll get an email if any of these things ever happens, which is much better to find out sooner rather than later. This is Glenn Berry and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you would like more content like this because it really helps the channel out. Thanks for watching.